In the eastern corner of the Mediterranean lies the island of Cyprus, birthplace of ancient gods and good wine, blessed by a warm sun and miles of sandy beaches. History cannot be ignored on this island. It is everywhere, no matter where you turn. Civilization here dates back 6,000 years before Christ. Cities in ancient times occupied dominant positions. Curium, with a clear view of the surrounding area and the sea, is a perfect example. The Romans, when they conquered the island, built spacious villas. These, at Paphos, have some very fine mosaic floors. Colossi Castle. The Crusaders were of a more military frame of mind, as can be seen by their forts and castles. The ancient tombs of royal kings, the glowing colors of Byzantine icons, are mute witnesses to centuries of peace. In the 7th century, the followers of the Prophet Muhammad burst out of the Arabian deserts into the Mediterranean. They too left this monument in Cyprus, the Mosque of Un Haram Teke. Oh, him now, for God's sake, he is mad! Don't get within him! Cyprus is not just an open-air museum, though. Ancient sites come alive as theatres are once again used for dramatic performances, as they were 2,000 years ago. Side by side in this island of contrasts, you see the old and new at work. There is an unbroken link with the past. Crafts have been handed down from generation to generation. Another mosaic floor is being created now. And an icon. The potter's hands mould vessels no different from the ones discovered by archaeologists in ancient tombs. The women of Lefkara have produced beautiful embroidery for centuries. Leonardo da Vinci ordered an altar cloth from them because their work was so fine. The designs and patterns are still the same.
In the peaceful countryside, folk customs and tradition are part of everyday life. Villagers troop into church for a special service on a saint's day and then pour out into the brilliant sunshine to enjoy the traditional open-air fair with its stalls of delicious sweets, hand-woven materials and more mundane consumer goods. The Cypriots are a very hospitable people. The traditional way of welcoming guests is to offer them preserved fruit and a glass of cold water. To refuse would be most impolite. In out-of-the-way places, you come across a rural scene which makes it seem that time has stopped, where man is still as close to nature as in years gone by. The Cypriot has always worked hard on his land, but now even more effort is needed because part of the island is under the military occupation of a foreign country, Turkey. Much of the country's economic resources lie behind the line which has divided the island since the Turkish invasion in 1974. But Cyprus still has much to offer. There are cool green forests in the Trudos Mountains where protected species such as the mouflon run wild among the cedar trees. New areas have been opened up for camping. Special care, however, has been taken to preserve the unspoilt beauty of the mountain resorts and the hotels blend with the forest around them. Every mountain village has its own character, its own charm. The houses are built for coolness in summer and warmth in winter when the snow comes. Dominating the Trudos range is Mount Olympus, a legendary mountain which in winter and spring attracts skiers from all over the world. There are slopes for the professional and the amateur and all the facilities one can wish for in winter sports.
The ancient Greeks believed that Aphrodite, goddess of love, was born in Cyprus. In spring, it is very much her island. A multicolored counterpane of flowers covers field and hill, and there is the promise of rich harvests. There is an abundance of fresh fruit. Grapes, oranges, tangerines, grapefruit, water and sugar melons, apples, pears and cherries. Some of it will be exported, but there is still enough at very low prices for the market stall and restaurant table, with the guarantee that it was picked that very same day. It's not difficult to move around, you can enjoy freedom of mobility with a hired car or use a taxi or bus. And discover for yourself villages off the beaten track. The fishermen bring in their catch of red mullet, swordfish, bream and octopus. The octopus's skin made tender in this rather energetic way. At countless small open-air tavernas, you can totally relax in a friendly atmosphere. And whether you want simplicity or luxury, join in water sports, just get a suntan, or go off on your own, the choice is there. There are still many unspoilt beaches to be found, miles of golden sand, including this beach, the one where Aphrodite was born. Each beach, each day, as its own character, offers something different. Sand dunes, rocky pools, shady trees, flowers making a splash of colour only a few steps away from the brilliant blue sea. Cyprus looks after its visitors well and has some of the most modern hotels in the Middle East. There are also beach complexes of bungalows for people who want more privacy. Service is always with a smile at any time or place.
clear sea is perfect for skin diving. There are several sub-aqua clubs where equipment can be hired and professional divers give expert training and advice. And the sea is always there. According to legend, Aphrodite bathed in this pool of clear water near Polis. As people approach this mysterious grove, they tend to lower their voices. Half an hour's drive away is Paphos where Aphrodite used to be worshipped, where yesterday still mingles harmoniously with today. The harbour of Paphos is surrounded by a wealth of archaeological sites. This church marks the spot where St. Paul was whipped at a pillar, which you can still see. An art school is run here in Paphos, and students come to it from many countries. Established artists and hopeful amateurs relax and try to capture the light and colors of the scene on their canvases. The Shadow Theatre, another art form, a folk entertainment, which has entranced generations of children and grown-ups too. It's very much a one-man show, but no one would guess it as the cut-out figures prance across the lighted screen. There is more, however, to Cyprus than history and tradition. The Nicosia race course provides weekly entertainment. And every town has a modern sports stadium. Nicosia, the capital, Limassol, Larnaca, are all busily urban and European to the eye. And yet the pace is more relaxed. Because in Cyprus, people believe life has to be lived to the full and not hurried. There is much to delight the eye and not burden the purse over much. Handicrafts of all kinds, local pottery, cloth of Viti, and the brilliant colors of the hand loom. After a day of sun and sea comes the cool evening. And there's a wide choice of entertainment in every town and resort center. Disco dancing until dawn. There are also many nightclubs with orchestras and entertainers. Not to mention the hundreds of small tavernas with a resident guitarist or singer. Yeah. 
The gourmet can enjoy a rich and attractive spread. Try the traditional fish and meat dishes or the meze, a selection of many tasty dishes which can also be found in the humblest taberna. Cyprus wine, praised through the ages and unbelievably inexpensive, flows throughout the year. But at harvest time, there is that much more of it at the annual wine festival in Limassol. Cyprus is proud of its history, traditions and customs and its hospitality. Wherever you go, you are encouraged to join in, dance, enjoy yourself and make new friends. Cyprus offers a warm welcome in more ways than one. Once you have been to Cyprus, you will want to come back again and again.